So in this example, I will show you all the three different options what this FIFO function can do. The first option is there is no pop uh, option is active. That means the FIFO goes in and goes out like a textbook FIFO definition. Here is the function which is calling the FIFO function block and we have a retentive uh, because this FIFO function is retentive so instant data block of this FIFO uh, is here okay and for the first option we need to select pop let's go offline first as zero pop is zero okay so we need to download this one again option online download a reset plc program no option stop all load start module finish so our plc sim is running here okay now <clears throat> i will run this one we don't really need this but no, anyway I, we basically need the in to see the instance data block and then the global data block okay so these are the variables which are the inputs and outputs which is going in and out from the instance data block of the FIFO function okay so D in let's select a value 5 and we, when we trigger one uh, this value will be inserted into the FIFO array so it is a so it is a right operation true let's turn this off and Oh, you can see five is going in. True, false. We have three. Let's put something else, maybe ten. Make it faster. One, two, four. Okay. Then I will put something else, maybe twelve, and then. 12 and then we have uh, one left let's put it something else maybe five again okay so please notice here what happens in this variable full so you see it's, it's saying it that my FIFO list is full now what happens if I try to push in more value will some changes happen let's put something completely different which is not in this list to see clearly and as you can see, nothing happened. This nine value didn't get inside here. Even if it is full, it doesn't take in any value anymore. We need to take some value out of this FIFO array. So let's trigger this and note what comes out in this D out. Okay. The first value which got into this error was five, so it came out five. Then five again, then five again, and then it should be ten. And it is 10. Okay, let's see what is the index is showing here now. So PR, this is a no pop operation. So PR no pop, PW no pop. So PR no pop uh, is uh, we are ready, uh, reading now. We are, have triggered the reading. So as you can see, we have actually read four values. So there are again four places uh, empty, uh, or the ERA can take in four new values into the uh, into itself. So let's see if I now I have 10 here and let's trigger the read input again. As you can see, it took it in. So this is how this basically works. You can see PW no pop, it went to one. All right. And uh, now we will see the second option, which is the pop up with the pop option. What we need to do is go offline. And here the selection is zero. We have to put it as one. And then go here online, download a recent PLC program. We need to reinitialize all those instance data blocks and global data blocks. Start module. Okay. So everything is refreshed. We don't have anything there. All right. So let's input some values into the FIFO list again. Maybe this time five again, and we have option one is active. So, okay, so 
saw what's happening. D, okay, sorry, I put the D out at the wrong the little, completely wrong one, sorry. Five, and then two, we have to trigger, because it already had two triggers before, so it didn't take it. Anyway, um, five, and then let's put 10. 10, and then maybe 19, trigger, And 1919, okay, maybe 21. 21. And maybe now 9. Let's see, so you can see as it says that the FIFO error is full is true. Okay, now what happens when we read in this case? It will just Take the first value, remove it, and shift this whole thing from here to here to one slot up or to the left. Let's see, uh, read trigger. So you can see, one five is removed and everything shifted to one and the list becomes zero. Let's read again. Let's trigger one, read again. As you can see, it keeps shifting. And removes the first animator from the list and shifts the whole list one slot to the left. All right, now we will need to see the third option, which is actually more interesting because it will remove the first element and check, for example, if it is 10, then it will check there are other 10 elements in this array or not, and then remove them all also, and then uh, fill the zero elements, which are zero, with uh, using the nearest uh, non-zero element. What we need to do here again is go offline, go to this one, and select this option as two. This is second pop option. Then online, download reset PLC program. So online mode, then it's data block. Okay, so here we are again. And let's see what happens in this case. I would put quickly maybe nine. Trigger, twelve, fourteen, and then nine again. And then twelve again. So it won't take any value further because it's full now. We need to empty it first to take the elements out of it. So full is true. And let's see what happens now when we uh, read one element. What is the first name? It's nine here. So what it should do, it should take this nine, this nine, and this nine, this nine, and then shift all the non-zero elements to, uh, to upwards. So there is no uh, zero elements in between the first value and then the last non-zero element. Let's trigger one. You can see all the nines are gone. All of them are, the non-zero elements have shifted to the nearest uh, uh, empty slot, okay? False. And if we take the next element, uh, we, we read, uh, do the read action trigger again, all the 12 should be gone. This 12, three here, and this 12 here, and then the 14 should shift here and the rest should be zero. Let's see what happens. We trigger and exactly that happened. So this is how the third option works. Okay, remember that uh, you, you, I'm showing this, uh, you have noticed that uh, this, this value pop cannot be dynamically changed. Okay, I mean, you need to for the first determine that what would we like to do uh, with this uh, error, uh, pop function, uh, sorry, this FIFO function and then set it in our program. If we want to use for some part of the program zero, then use another, call this one, and create an, another instant data block for this one. And do not try to change this uh, dynamically. This uh, FIFO uh, program doesn't work uh, that way, okay? So hope this helps, all right? Take care.